on legacy media, it's quite possible to watch a kind of bright, breezy, cheerful news item about heart attacks, as if it's like some new trend, as if it's Pogs or Pokemon Go or something, talking about heart disease in the young, it's a new sensation. Heart disease in young people. Hey, why wait to be an old person or obese or diabetic? You could have a heart attack and still be an Olympian. What I like is the sort of pose of bafflement that accompanies all of this. Look how far into this legacy media report you get without saying, have you asked these people... If by any chance they've taken one or more is pretty staggering to watch unfold. What is causing this? We are back with our ongoing heart health series with a, a new way of thinking about heart attacks. Yeah, maybe we should think about them as fun. Doctors say they're seeing an alarming number of seemingly healthy patients having heart attacks, and those patients are getting younger and younger. This story is going to blow you away because research shows that more than 10% of heart attack patients had no known risk factors such as obesity or smoking. I mean, in a way, this is hilarious and brilliant, but this is sort of also the way that the legacy media functions, even for through innocuous soft power in introducing and normalizing ideas that should be galling and terrifying. Hey, heart attacks are on the increase. It's not just for fatties out there and people always on the fags and the booze. Healthy young people are having heart attacks too. So get used to that. And if you see it, just go, oh yeah, I saw that on the Today Show. Heart attacks for young people. It's like having Crocs with those badges in it. It's kind of cool. Now there's a group of doctors at Mount Sinai here in New York City tracking patients to see if they can uncover the new risk factors behind this trend. What are the risk factors behind these trends? I suddenly feel like one of them kids at school does, mm, mm, like Martin Prince from The Simpsons. Mm. Oh, please pick me, teacher. Please pick me. I think I have an idea. What could be causing all this? Oh, pick me, teacher. I'm ever so smart. <laughs> it's photosynthesis. Damn your feeble brain! Trying to unravel the mystery of young heart attacks, Dr. Deepak Bhatt, director of Mount Sinai Fuster Heart Hospital in New York City. Here he is, just trying to undo it. Why don't you... T I've got an idea. Type M-R-N-A spike protein, cleavage site, DARPO, Eco Health Alliance, N-I-I-H... Put in there, Wuhan Institute of Virology. Put into your search engine, Anthony Fauci. Put dual purpose weapons research. Put into that thing, inflammation of heart tissue cause. Put in there, propaganda campaign. Put in there, never trust government again, question mark. Suri, I'm wondering, should I ever trust the government again? Well, actually, seeing how I've got some pretty lucrative contracts with the government, I think you should maybe shut the fight. In fact, I've already given this information to the guy. Ding dong, who's that at the door? Sorry, you bastard. He's looking into patients presenting with no known risk factors, like diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Yeah, no, um, no, no, dun, 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 no known risk factors. What could be causing all this? I think there are a lot of reasons for that. One probably has to do with the obesity epidemic. Yep, people are fat, so big food. They're feeding us food that they know is bad for us. If the people just stop making profit if we ate food that was grown locally or hunted or harvested or farmed locally. Yeah, yeah, that would be better for us. But corporations have co-opted that. Cool, cool. Got that. Got that. But it could also be other things. What? Other things. Another potential clue, long smoldering inflammation. Hmm, what's causing a long smoldering, almost quite sexy smoldering inflammation? We'll get to the bottom of this. Won't we scoop? Oh, hi, scoop. Hi, yikes. And I'm talking about inflammation in the arteries, supplying blood to the heart. that might lead to the plaque in that artery to act up, in fact, to rupture, a blood clot to form. Interesting that cardiologists were among the first people during the pandemic to openly speak out, along with vaccine makers, inventors, people like Robert Malone, people like Asim Malhotra, cardiologist, Robert Malone, vaccine maker, all these people that were suddenly, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're a whack job, all the people that we're invited to hate. Do you really think 
Still, that like Jay Bhattacharya, Nick Malone, Peter McCulloch, you pick your own hero during the pandemic period. Do you really think that they're bad people for whatever reason we were told they were bad? I'm, I'm among them simply for passing on information I heard elsewhere. Or do you think it might be because when they do research on their computer, they don't come up with stuff like, hmm, it could be plaque. They come up with stuff like, it could be Pfizer. And that's why they're being sued all the way across America. If that blocks the blood flow in that artery, that's what causes a heart attack or heart muscle damage. The cause of inflammation in seemingly healthy people like Matthias, who are not obese and don't smoke, is not yet clear. What's causing this to happen to you, Matthias? We've got to get to the bottom of this without ever indicting a major pharmaceutical company as we continue the investigation. When you think about it now, the sort of old phenomena of collapsing athletes, because this has been extraordinary, because billions of people have taken this medication, it would seem to me, as a layperson, that probably in all likelihood, there's a new almost genus of heart condition that's emerging among healthy people because they put their hearts under a different kind of stress than, say, really old people or really obese people or people that have got pre-existing conditions. So whatever it is that's in that team when it migrates to the heart tissue causing it means that the usual stress that athletes experience or young healthy people experience is not able to be endured and perhaps it somehow interfaces and intersects with hormones as well because it seems that menstruating women and pregnant women and pubescent or young males have a different experience of it. But hey! I'm not a scientist, and we've got to follow the science. And why don't we follow all the scientists out of the FDA where they're all being fired because anyone who had principles or objections was fired so that the propaganda campaign could continue. Don't forget to vote for someone you can trust tonight, guys. Don't forget to vote for someone you can trust on the, off the back of that debate. Hey, this is exciting. We've got a great partner today. It's Rumble. But beyond Rumble, it's Rumble's latest venture. Let me ask you first, are you a Sleepy Joe type character with zero cognitive performance, struggling to muster focus and brain power for basic things like running the United States of America? You've got to stop drinking woke liberal coffee that hates you and your way of life and start your day by drinking Rumble's very own 1775 coffee. This is going to be the best tasting coffee you've ever had. Seriously good, ethically sourced from a family farm in the high altitude mountains of Bolivia. Not in the Bolivian lowlands run not by a family, but by a single man still living with a pet. No! Instead of waking up and drinking your big corporation-owned woke ideology coffee that's probably making you sick from the pesticides it's sprayed with, try Rumble's 1775 Revolutionary Coffee. Support freedom of speech. Build a parallel economy that actually values you and loves you. My favourite? It's dark, of course. I've always found the lure of the dark irresistible. I'm sorry, how can I stay mad at you? You're just going to have to wait over there for a little while. Level up your morning routine with a 1775 coffee. Sleep all night knowing your hard-earned dollary dues are going towards supporting freedom-loving creators like me on Rumble. Visit 1775coffee.com now. Pick up your first bag. Use the code BRAND to save 10% on your first order. Oh, come on. Why choose, you know? Okay, back to the content. Thankfully, we do have people that are articulate and therefore vilified as sort of like, you know, propagandists and figures of hatred, like Tucker Carlson, who just lightheartedly and joyously explains to us why these kind of things keep happening. A, a media should be like holding these people to the fire on that, or the vax injuries and deaths, which are manifold, they're everywhere. Are you joking? And in, and in like countries that actually believe in science, and there are a few in Europe, they're looking at the, I mean, every vaccine causes injuries, every single one. One of my children was injured by a flu vaccine. This is known. In the United States, we're not allowed to sue. We can sue makers of playground equipment, totally fine. We can sue anybody for anything. Gun manufacturers, you cannot sue vaccine manufacturers. And every vaccine causes injuries, every single one. And there's a database publicly available in the United States that shows you how many. And the COVID vax, the mRNA vax from Pfizer has caused more injuries than all self-reported injuries than all the previous vaccination campaigns for the last 50 years combined. And no one in the media has written a story about it because, well, there are a couple reasons. One is that Pfizer is one of the largest advertisers on television in the United States. And the point is not to sell the product. And I worked in television my whole life. So I can, this is not speculation. The point is not to sell some weird drug for rheumatoid arthritis to TV viewers because people can't prescribe their own drugs. No, that's not the point. This is not a retail sales pitch. It's interesting because 
in the back of your mind, haven't you always known that there was something odd about those adverts? Like, we all talk about them. They're a staple of stand-up comedy. Are you impotent? Are you old? Do you need Viagra? Have you got a heart disease? Are you pissing yourself? Are you thinking about criticising the government? Are you awakening right now and starting to realise that the media doesn't exist in order to interrogate power, but to amplify and to support power? Are you realising that the reason that authoritarianism is on the rise is because there's a natural tendency now towards decentralization via open communication. Do you see now that there's the rise of populist figures because people are starting to recognize that popular figures that have oratory abilities can reach large numbers of people through media because there aren't the same kind of gatekeepers? And the whole reason that the Supreme Court has just enabled Biden to continue to be able to censor big tech companies and in particular social media companies is because now, otherwise, there will be waves of movements and uprisings and protests and move everywhere you look, there would be oppositions and counter narratives and the ability to oppose war and to oppose bills and to oppose movements and to oppose almost any centralized idea. Are you beginning to awaken that? Do not take this medicine. May cause spiritual awakening. This is an insurance policy that the drug makers are buying with the big media companies. We're your biggest advertiser. Maybe if we have a lot of vax injuries from a brand new product, you won't say too much. And they don't. I think that's completely corrupt and shameful. And, and I have to say, you know, I was, I was fired over a year ago, so I don't have to like worry about this or be defensive about it because I like don't have a job. So there is a certain freedom in, in unemployment. And so I sympathize with you guys who work for these companies that are like truly corrupt and you sort of know that, but you don't want to deal with it because you've got kids and a mortgage. I get it. I've been there. Weird, isn't it? Because that's kind of what it comes down to. Remember when we saw the former FDA vaccine director speaking, you get a glimpse of what the pandemic was like personally. Oh no, I think of a young athlete, a young guy who's like, you know, oh, maybe I'll be a basketball player one day. Like getting that jab and all of a sudden he's got and doesn't exercise no more and just another dream falls away. And then think of the individuals that make up the media and then just think of this. We're all just human beings and human individuals operating within weird, somewhat arbitrary, but definitely corrupted systems. And there's this pretense that they can't be radically altered in a variety of ways. There's a pretense that there aren't wonderful things within tradition. And uh, there's a pretense that there aren't brilliant things available to us through scrutiny an analysis and recognizing that certain institutions that may have been in place for years and years could do with a radical reckoning reform or undertaking or opposition. There's this kind of sense that we could just continue to vacillate between two corrupt parties all the while we're just being drained and not addressing the key fact here. Power is coalescing, coagulating, a bit like plaque in an artery, as a matter of fact. And if we don't do something to stop this, which means I find myself in the peculiar position of saying, when you're looking at politics in your country, if there is anyone who seems to be being censored or shut down, probably that might be the way to go because whatever they're saying about that person oh they're hateful they're evil it won't be that that won't be the reason they're stopping them you have the compliance of the media class that tucker has just articulated it comes down to individuals then you have this kind of odd moral and spiritual affinity that people will go oh i just have to support the labor party because it must mean something i have to support the dems it must mean something because otherwise my whole life was just a kind of i was just duped i was just a sort of a willing dope a rube sat there taking on untrue points. People don't want to accept that. Now, I'm really not saying one political party is better than the other. You, you can make those kind of assessments for yourself. People seem to do it and seem to have various affiliations. What's plainly required is a reckoning at depth that includes an assessment of the deep state's power, the ability to regulate and control information, where these kind of peculiar administrative bodies are able to assert control. I'm talking about your WHOs, your NATOs, and in particular, financial institutions like the IMF and the World Bank, how they manage and manipulate power on a global scale. That means that whoever you vote for, you're going to get someone, unless it's a radical kind of berserker type person. And perhaps you're right. Perhaps Trump is one of those, perhaps as well as his obvious personal charisma. That's what draws you to them. But I would say beyond that, we have to be willing to recognize that people that are excluded from debates are definitely the kind of people that should be in the debates. People that are being censored and shut down, I'm sure they're not perfect, but they ain't being shut down because they're racist or something. That They don't care about that. They don't care about that. Like Tucker, I've worked within these institutions and I can tell you firsthand, increasingly I recognise that there is no moral centre there. None at all.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.